William Haig, who electrified the Tory conference as a 16-year-old comprehensive school by almost 40 years ago and went on to become Conservative leader and Foreign Secretary in the last Parliament. And although he retired at the election, this heavyweight is today back punching in perhaps the most important political battle of this Parliament. Can you conceive of circumstances in which you would be recommending withdrawal from the EU? Well, I, I think it's very unlikely in this coming year. I am, the, I am a long-standing critic of the European Union. But then you have to think, in 2016, at a time of great economic and security and other challenges for the Western world, is it actually the right thing for the United Kingdom? Would it be in our own national interest to leave? That is the question we're all going to have to answer in a referendum. And that makes me very worried about it. if what then happened was the EU became a lot weaker and the UK disintegrated, well, what would we actually have achieved by leaving the EU? And Scottish nationalists would say to people in Scotland, you want to stay in the EU in Scotland, the way to do that now is to leave the United Kingdom. Right now, the expectation is that the Prime Minister will make a recommendation to stay in the EU. But there's got to be a chance that these talks go so horribly badly wrong that he feels he can't do that. What would you then do? It would make a huge difference to all of us if the Prime Minister came back and said, look, these negotiations have all failed and I'm not recommending staying in the EU. Many of us would all have to reevaluate our positions. I don't think that will happen. But it's looking increasingly unlikely that he will get what he wants in terms of restricting benefit payments to migrants and tax credits to migrants. What does he do about that? Do you think he can recommend we stay in if he only gets half of what he wants? Well, I'm, I'm sure he will be coming back from those negotiations saying he's got a lot more than half of what he wanted. If the proposal on migration that the government has made on welfare benefits for people who migrate to the UK isn't acceptable to other countries in the EU, there has to be a discussion about alternative proposals to that. Uh, about some other way of trying to meet the same objective so that people in Britain can be sure that it's fair that our welfare system is fair and is not going to be abused by people from other countries. There are different ways that you can do that. So I'm sure that's, a, that's not a subject that the Prime Minister will want to abandon altogether. So just to be clear, your expectation would be, and of course you know the Cabinet very well, your expectation would be that the vast majority of members of the Cabinet will stick with the Prime Minister. I expect the, the majority of the Cabinet will be on the same side that the, the Prime Minister gives a, a lead on. So, Robert, hi. Um, fancy seeing you here. How significant is this intervention, do you think? I think it is important. Um, a senior government source said to me that William Hague is making the pro-EU case with the blessing of the Chancellor and of the Prime Minister. He is, in a sense, saying what they wish they could say, but they can't because if they engage to this extent in encouraging people to vote to stay in, well, they'd cause mayhem, civil war in the Tory party, many of whose members, as you know, are passionately Eurosceptic. Uh, now, I think what will trouble the more Eurosceptic wing of the party, who believe that the Prime Minister is negotiating honestly for reforms to the EU, was what William Hague had to say about that manifesto pledge that migrants to the UK shouldn't receive benefits unless they've been here for four years. Because William Hague absolutely made clear that was not a red line, that there may well be alternative ways of achieving that same end. And that'll just reinforce the Eurosceptic view that the playing field in this referendum is tilted heavily against them. And we've heard from one of them tonight significantly, haven't we? What more can you tell us about that? Well, Chris Grayling, the Leader of the House, has become the first of the Eurosceptic members of the Cabinet to signal in an article in The Telegraph that he is very likely, I would say inevitable, uh, inevitably going to be campaigning for the UK to leave uh, the EU. Now, 
Downing Street alerted to me this, this to me, sorry, alerted me to this some hours uh, before the article was published because they are desperately keen for this not to be seen as the cabinet breaking ranks and abandoning the tradition of collective cabinet responsibility. They say the Prime Minister is happy with Chris Grayling coming out, but this is just a taste of the civil war we can expect. Okay, Robert, thank you very much indeed.